Namibia is the fourth biggest uranium producer worldwide. Although the first mine was opened 35 years ago, the Namibian population until now pays little attention to uranium mining. Today, the country has three mines when a new rush on this resource has begun worldwide. Sibyl Moldizo, Hilda Unona from the NBC and Brigitta Moore from Deutsche Welle try to establish the true picture of how uranium will influence Namibia's future. I don't know anything about the mine, nothing. I have no idea what they produce and how important it is to our country. I don't even know where it is. The uranium mine, what I know is uh, producing uranium and we export it. And uh, that is creating a benefit of the community. It creates job creation and uh, how to combat the poverty. It would be important in terms of development of the town and also for the provision of uh, employment to the community here. I don't know about whether they have uh, any effect, like negative effect. I know a little about the uranium. Yeah, I was there at the mine. And maybe from this hole, it's only maybe acid water. You're just going to burn yourself. and It's a very dangerous place. I don't know how they work and how they do everything there. They got nice salary as well, so they got a nice life. is um, tracking the origin of nuclear power. So the people who live around here receive gamma radiation from the radioactive material which is stored on this uh, site. Burton course in disagreement shakes her head. Backed by the Namibian environment organization EarthLife, the Namibian environmental activist has invited a film screening in the capital this afternoon. About 40 people from around Vintuk have come to watch the film. The documentary is about how uranium mining is dealt with in Australia and the damages it has inflicted on the environment. The ensuing discussion quickly turns to uranium mining in this country, especially in the coastal Irongo region in the west of Namibia. By organizing film screening like these, as well as information leaflets, presentations and workshops, 69-year-old Bertrand Kors is attempting to raise awareness and educate Namibians about uranium mining. There is very few awareness in this country concerning uranium mining and its dangers. I think it is partly a legacy of the apartheid era that people do not know about their rights. Another important point is poverty and high unemployment. If I don't have anything to eat, I won't care about what is happening at the coast, if the region is being contaminated or people get sick. I first have to care for my children and my family. I have to feed them. EarthLife is one of the few Namibian organizations which do research about the consequences and hazards of uranium mining. During the mining process, radon gas is released and when the wind carries it away, it can be dangerous and can cause health conditions such as lung sickness and cancer. The environment can still be affected long after mining activities are done. This is because tailings, which remain as a waste product, are still radioactive. Tailings are a danger for environment because they can seep into the soil. When they have dried, the dust can be carried far away, especially with the strong winds in the Namib desert. It is possible, for example, that the whole coastline surrounding the mines are contaminated with radioactive and toxic dust. To find out how this high-risk uranium mining is dealt with in Namibia, we traveled to the coastal region and there we visited the Lange Heinrich mine. This mine was created in 2007 
and belongs to an Australian company called Paladin. Langer Heinrich is about 30 kilometers from the oldest mine in the country, Rossing. The uranium ore is mined through an exploration in an open pit, which is approximately 7 kilometers wide. The ore is then brought to the mine on huge trucks. The production is done in the open. The ore is transported into a machine where it is separated from the earth. By then, 40% of the non-uranium ore is already removed. For one ton of uranium, 30,000 to 40,000 kilograms of uranium is explored. Thereafter, the uranium is leached with a chemical solution. This is when the radioactive tailings are produced. The uranium-containing liquid is then dried at high temperature. The end product is called yellow cake. The yellow powder is shipped in tins to converters in Canada, France and the USA. The mine operates on three shifts around the clock, seven days a week, for the whole year. Overall, up to 4,000 Namibians are employed in the mining industry. About 670 of them are directly employed at the Langer Heinrich mine. Currently, the mine produces 4 tons of pure uranium every day, which is worth 560,000 US dollars. Werner Duvenhage is the managing director of the mine. He is sure that, despite the recent nuclear catastrophe in Japan, nuclear power plants will continue to be built around the world. There's no real alternatives. Uh, if you look at uh, carbon-free or, or low-carbon energy production, power production, it's really you are left with uranium to carry the base load. So therefore we think in the long to the medium term, nothing will really change. If anything, it might become even stronger. China is currently constructing 27 new nuclear plants and India also wants to expand its nuclear energy production. Since the 1990s, worldwide demand for uranium has risen higher than production. This is also why the interest in Namibian uranium has increased. The French Arriva mining company has recently started operating its mine in the Iranga region adding to a total number of three uranium exploration mines in Namibia. On top of this, 60 exploration licenses have been granted. Langer Heinrich is now extending its production capacities and Werner Duvenhage is optimistic. It will be actually a huge operation by then and from the current 5.2 million we will increase the production to 10 million pounds a year so it's quite significant. If you know just some of the mines say if the expansions go ahead with ourselves and rushing like we are planning to do and then Namibia might become even you know like the second biggest producer. Namibia and uranium are still going to be a big thing for a very long time I think. The Langer Heinrich and Rossing mines together have contributed 3.2% of government income in 2008. Uranium mining thus is an important economical factor in Namibia, says Lydia Amutenya from the Ministry of Mines and Energy. It's an open secret that Namibia ranks fourth in the country that produces uranium. A mineral bringing in the country things like employment, loyalties, tax payments and so forth. It's an economic asset and it should be considered as such. So the sky actually is a limit in the uranium mining sector in Namibia. And I'm sure as time goes, the benefits will even increase. The 72-year-old Namibian Elke Erb lives on her farm, about 70 kilometers from the mine. She used to grow spinach, tomatoes and asparagus. Her neighbors still grow vegetables in their fields that are sold at the market. The asparagus from the coastal region is particularly popular in Namibian restaurants, despite the potential harmful effects from the nearby Langerheinrich and Rossing uranium mines.
The mine has picked up some of our vegetables and has sent it somewhere for testing, but they also told us it would be a lengthy procedure and so on. I don't know exactly what the outcome of this was. Rössing also for many years has tested the water here. In the riverbed they digged a borehole every 5 to 10 kilometers in order to show that it's not their fault if something is wrong. And they also took samples of our own water places, but this has also stopped or else I don't notice it anymore. Oder ich krieg's nicht mit. Elke Erb today doesn't grow vegetables anymore. But this decision does not have to do with the uranium mines close by, she says. She now has camels on her farm and earns extra money offering camel rides to tourists. Elke Erb hopes the uranium rush in the region will bring more tourists to her farm. She says there is no joint initiative to represent the farmers who are living nearby the mine. Die Rössingmine war behilflich uns. The Rössing mine has informed us about the hazards of uranium. They have convinced us that everything is okay. Alles in Butter. For a long time, there was no independent control over the impact of uranium mining on people's health and the environment. Last year, the Ministry of Mines and Energy compiled a study answering just these questions. The result? The groundwater is clean, radiation levels do not exceed international standards. Namibia does have an environmental law, which was amended in 2007. It provides for a government authority to monitor the environmental impact of the mines. But until now, this authority only exists on paper. The uranium industry has largely set its own rules for its mining activities. The Uranium Stewardship Committee, a mining industry's initiative, has obliged itself to follow its own guidelines for workers and environmental protection. New regulations are supposed to come soon, which will regulate uranium mining. The environmental organization EarthLife has given its input to the legislation procedure, but the mining companies have taken action too. They founded the Uranium Institute in the coastal town of Swakopmund. Here, radiation officers are trained and they provide a medical center for mine workers, which is financed by the industry. Wotan Suichers is the director at this institute. It's appropriate. Uh, legislation is never 100%, as you know. It's always developing. And as Namibia is moving on its um, investigation of uh, the nuclear cycle, it will most probably have to be amended over time. But um, uh, for our purposes at the moment, we are only doing uranium mining in Mali. It is appropriate. Back in Ventuk, the discussion about uranium mining in Namibia is about to end. Birch and Kors is already planning the next information event. She will soon travel to Spain and share her work with European environmental activists. She says that Earth Life has given up on their initial goal. We realized that we cannot stop uranium mining. So first of all, our goal is now for it to happen as environmentally friendly as possible. Secondly, the workers have to be taught about the dangers they are all the time exposed to. Thirdly, we want that the government sees that there is an institution like us which monitors what is happening. For the future, the Namibian government wants to have a nuclear plant by 2018. Birchen Kors wants to stop this at every cost. She hopes that she can create more awareness amongst the Namibian population and count on their active involvement. This program was compiled and produced by NBC and Deutsche Welle.